Hello, and welcome to the SolidCam introduction series of training videos. The topic for this discussion is thread milling. Thread milling toolpaths can be applied to both internal or external features of your part. In this particular example, I want to thread these hole features. Looking at my design model, I can see that these are defined as quarter 20 threaded holes. To instigate the thread milling toolpath, you'll go to the SolidCam 2.5D tab and select thread milling. I've taken the liberty to prep the part for thread milling. If I were to go into Solid Verify, I've spotted the holes to the chamfer diameter, and I pre-drilled the holes to a 201 hole preparation size. Select thread milling from your list. The workflow for thread milling is exactly the same as it is for all operations within SolidCam, geometry, tools, levels, technology, and link. To select the geometry, it is very similar to selecting the holes for drilling. In this case, I'm going to select this top face surface. It will collect all the holes that intersect that top face into my toolpath. From here, I'm going to select a tool. When thread milling, if you're machining straight threads, you'll, stick, you'll pick the standard thread mill uh, selection. For tapered threads, you'll pick thread mill tapered. In this case, standard thread mill. You can define your thread data either from a table or you can enter the pitch of the threads that you want it to mill. In this case, I'm going to pick it from a standard table and I'm going to select quarter 20 from my list. It's important to note when you pick a standard thread mill, the tool geometry and the shape. Standard thread mills define the shape as a cylinder. This will only affect the simulation when you go into Solid Verify. I'll collect this tool into my toolpath form. From here, we'll set our levels. Our levels is being calculated in this case from the top of the target, so our top of the target of, this, of the part that we defined in our setup. From here, I'll specify a thread depth. Thread depth can be calculated as a dimensional value or by the number of threads into the part that you want it to go. In this case, we'll go with a depth of a half inch. Let's get a toolpath on the screen and take a look at it a little bit more closely. From here, we can see a tool that starts at the bottom of the thread and cuts every thread on its way up from pass to pass to pass. In the Technology tab, the sorting works very much like, again, with drilling. Default will pick the holes in the order that you pick them. In this case, we pick the face. I can see the order that it chose. If for whatever reason you wanted to pick it in a particular order, maybe you had a lot of holes and you wanted it to be sorting it in a certain direction for a particular region, you can select that here. In this case, we'll go back to default. Do you want to use G41 or G42s on your thread milling cycles? If you want to use cutter compensation or not, select it here by turning this on or off. Is the hole an internal or an external hole feature? In this case, this is an internal hole with a major diameter of a quarter inch with a minor diameter of, of that. It pulled the information from the tool table when we selected that thread mill. That tool table, incidentally, is completely customizable. You can make your own prep drill sizes and um, minor dimensions come out as a default. So if you have a preference, you can specify it. Is this a right-handed or a left-handed thread? Am I cutting from the bottom or cutting from the top down? If I'm worried about the tool running into a lot of chips at the bottom of a blind hole, I'm going to start at the bottom and cut my way to the top. Your leads and links. You have individual control for lead in and lead out. In this case, we're leading in with an arc, leading out with an arc at a specified value. You have the ability on your lead in to flatten that lead in value. Same thing with the lead out. So if we make the lead in and lead out the same and recalculate it, let's look at the tool path a little bit more closely. If I wanted to, if I was concerned about the back side of the tool colliding with the ID of the thread, I can flatten the internal lead in or I can flatten the lead out as well. And you'll see a small change here at the top or the bottom of the thread by flattening that.
So I might want to flatten the lead in at the bottom and let the lead out extend fully. If I want to overrun the top of the thread, I'll go back to my levels tab and on my upper level, I'll define an overrun at the top and hit recalculate. In the technology tab, you have the ability to apply roughing and finish toolpaths to it. In this case, we're taking one finish cut at size. To activate roughing toolpaths, simply check the check mark. When my roughing is set to single, I can give it an allowance for the finish pass. So in this case, one roughing pass leaving eight thousandths and one finish pass at the size of the hole. When I activate multiple roughing tool pass, it will allow me to specify values for my first engagement into the material, all subsequent roughing passes, and then a finish allowance for the finish pass. When you do activate multiple roughing strategies, in the Advanced tab, the rough pattern becomes engaged. You can specify its way of roughing the thread. Do I want to plunge in the middle and rough them just uniformly in? Or do I want to rough leading in from the top edge of the thread going down, roughing from the bottom edge of the thread going up, or alternating from side to side on each subsequent pass for roughing? In this case here, we'll just go single cut, one cut rough, and one cut finish. I mentioned when we looked at the tool before that we chose for machining. We look, I, I described that the tool is being described as a cylinder. My tool has a point on it on a thread mill. So if I go into solid verification with this tool in here, my simulation is going to reflect a cylinder cut. So you can see that here it is being described. There's my rough and my finish passes for each of those holes. And the simulation in solid sees the tool as being a smooth cylinder. You can, however, describe your tools from your own custom library of tools. When I come in to select a tool for thread milling, if I have a library established for thread mills, I can go into my cutters directory, in this case, single point threading, select a tool that has the correct geometry profile. I can drag and drop this into my toolkit. From here, because this tool can be used in different threads, I can use this tool in various sizes, I'm going to right click on it and break the link. By breaking the link, it will allow me to choose whether I want to use user defined thread pitch or pick the thread pitch from a standard table. In this case, I'll pick the quarter 20 again. This really only affects the simulation image of the toolpath. If we were to hit save and calculate, my toolpath is the same here on the screen. But when I go into my solid simulation, my verification, and I simulate, the toolpath will reflect the threads being cut. Again, it's strictly visual, but you can have your own custom set of tools for thread milling. If I go back and pick the previous tool that, that we use for thread milling, uh, let's pick this one here and recalculate. Let's make it one pass only. If the number of flutes of your thread hop, if you're not using a single pointed thread mill, maybe you have a multiple, multiple tooth thread mill, you can dictate the number of tools or number of, of flutes that that tool actually has. So I can tell it that it has a number of teeth as being maybe 10 teeth. If the length of those teeth encompass the entire length of the thread, what I'll get is one tool path that has one helical move because the length of the flute will encompass the entire length of the thread all the way up. And it will automatically adapt based on the flute length of the tool. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you again on the next.